Okay, this is um, VHDL, Engineering 360, and this is Lab 2, Part 2. In Lab 1, or Part 1, in Lab 2, Part 1, we did a 1-bit comparator with NAND gates, and we set up a, um, a test harness for that guy. All right, I'm going to close my design summary. Now what I want to do is I want to select my project. I want to add a new VHDL file. Now I don't want to add a new one that exists. What I want to do is I want to say project new source. Do another VHDL module. I want to call this guy EQ2. Dot, actually EQ2. Make sure it's VHDL module. Okay. Skip next. Next. Finished all that. Now look at your little explorer tree. You know you've got EQ1 that is being wrapped in a test harness. I just created EQ2. Alright, let's go to EQ2 and take out all the comments so we can focus on the VHDL. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a 2-bit comparator, but what I'm going to do is use two instantiations of a 1-bit comparator. So, when I do my 2-bit um, comparator, what I am going to do here is I am going to set up the entity block. So let's do that entity. Okay. And now the 2-bit comparator is going to take two signals coming in. It's going to take A. It's going to take B. Both of those guys are 2-bit quantities. I'm going to output a single bit that tells me if A is equal to B. Um, in particular, if uh, it's going to be 1 bit. It's going to be 1 if A equals B. It's going to be 0 otherwise. So there's my entity block. So I'm two-thirds of the way done. I got my libraries. I got my entity. Now I need to do my architecture block. Well, what we're going to do is we're going to build this guy by instantiating an instance of component EQ1. So what I need to do here is instead of declaring a signal, what I'm doing is I'm going to declare a component. EQ2 is going to be made up of two EQ1, so I have to declare EQ1 using the component statement. Now go look at your book. We lectured on this. It's under component instantiation in chapter 1. Now I'm going to need some intermediate signals too to make this work, so I need to declare a couple of signals. And those signals would be E0 and E1. They're both 1-bit standard logic. Okay, So I've declared the EQ1 component that we did in part 1 of lab 2, and I've declared two signals. Now I have to do my begin block. Well, the begin block is really straightforward. All you need to do, let me copy and paste this in the begin in block, is, is just create two instances. So what I do is I instantiate an instance of EQ1. I call it EQ bit 0. I instantiate another instance of EQ1. I call it EQ bit 1. And what I do here is I take uh, the left variables. The left variables are the ones of the component. So notice they're the same in both cases. And then what I do is I map them to variables of this file. Well, this file's got 2-bit input, 2-bit input, A and B. So when I'm testing the bit 0, I map that to A0 and B0, and then this tells me if A0 and B0 are equal. And then down here, I take A1 and B1 and map it again to A0, I0 and I1, and then E1 tells me if the A1 and B1 are equal. Okay? Then I take the output of E0, E1, and I and them together because I want both sets of bits to be equal. I use the and operator, and I put that into AEQB, which is the output up here from my entity block. So there you go. So look at your uh, VHDL. Your VHDL now is nothing more than me instantiating two instances of what we created in um, part one of lab two. <coughs> and that's how you build digital systems. You just connect. It's kind of like Lego blocks. You're just connecting two components that have already been developed. All right, let's select that guy. Um, notice over in my Explorer window now, when you open up EQ2, it's got two nodes underneath it that says, oh, EQ2 is made up of two instances of EQ1. All right. Great. So what I need to do now is um, put a test bench. Well, let's actually compile. Let's select EQ2, run down here, and double-click behavioral check syntax to make sure everything compiles. You know, I might have missed a semicolon somewhere. Okay, it looks like it checks. Now, what I want to do is I want to simulate EQ2. Well, how do I do that? Project, new source. VHDL test bench, not module, but test bench. We call my I call my test benches TB. I got EQ2, and then we click next. Now here it says, oh, you're creating a test bench file. 
well, which module do you want to test? Do you want to test EQ1 or do you want to test EQ2? Well, we've already tested EQ1. We're confident that works. Let's create a test bench file for EQ2. All right, so there's EQ2. Click Next, Finished. And now look at my Explorer window over here. Okay. I've got Lab 2 Demo, which is running on the XC3S500E chip for Flat Grid 320. And then it has two test harnesses. It's got a test bench file EQ1 that's testing the EQ1 component. It has a test bench file. Okay, I just had to answer the door there. Now, where was I? I can't even remember here. Uh, but I'm back. So, yeah, we basically added a test bench file for EQ2. And you notice in the Explorer, you got TB EQ2. And underneath it, uh, it's the test bench harness for EQ2. And then EQ2 is made up of e two instances of EQ1. Now, if your Explorer hierarchy in the left-hand window does not look like this, you did something wrong. Don't even try to fix it. Just start over, okay? So you got to have the same hierarchy I have here. Now, notice, we just put that test bench file for EQ2 in there. And, of course, it put all that default stuff in there. So let's double-click that get rid of all the comments and um, you know a lot of the errors come from the back that it's setting you up to use a clock and we're currently not using a clock okay so um, let's save that see how many errors disappeared okay I've got four there now this is the test bench file uh, test bench files have an empty entity block it's of EQ2 so it declares an instance of EQ2 and then it uh, declares two variables here now let's um, create these let's call these guys TBA and TBB so that we can kind of identify what is part of the test bench and what's part of our component. We're not using a clock, so let's get rid of all this. Okay, let's save it. All right, that got rid of a couple errors. Now, in your begin in block, what you have to do is instantiate the component that you're using. These are the variables of the component. Go back and look at eq2.vhd and you'll see that's AB. But in the test bench, we're mapping that guy to TBA. TBB and TB underscore, which I just um, changed the name right up here. Okay, so I'm instantiating that guy. Now I'm not using a clock, so I'm going to take out this clock process, but we are going to use our stimulus process. Okay, now this stimulus references the clock, so let's get rid of that. And if I save it, all my errors have gone away. Now at this point, what I need to do is set up my variables um, TB underscore A is equal to, now what is TB underscore A? That's a two-bit variable, isn't it? Standard logic vector, one down to zero. Well, let's set that guy to zero, zero. And what we'll do is we'll say TBB, and we'll set that guy equal to zero, zero. Okay, what I got up here, okay. And then what I will do is I'll actually take that and I'll say I'll cut that and I'll wait for 100 nanoseconds. Now, I've got four inputs, right? two inputs for each one, which means I'm going to have 16 possibilities. So let's see, 15, 14, 13, 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Okay, I copied in 16 possibilities. 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, and let's put a 1 here, a 1, 0, and you got a 1, 1, and you got a 1, 1, and then you got a, uh, let's see, a 1, 1, 1, and you got a 1, 0, and then you got a 1, and you got a 1 here, and let's see, this guy would be, actually if I can count, we're going in 10, and then this guy would be 11, and this guy would be uh, let's see, 12, and then this guy would be 13, and this would be 14, and this guy would be 15. So see how I kind of basically just uh, hardwire, I'm counting from uh, 0 to 15 in 4 bits. Let's save this. Now let's go back and make sure everything is ready to go. Let's select EQ1 and uh, compile that guy. And let's do EQ2. We can rerun all, compile that guy. Okay, because EQ1, EQ2 got to be. Now let's go up and do our test bench one. Okay, that one's still got a green check. That's good. TBEQ2 doesn't have one, so let's recompile it. So there's four files you got to compile and make sure they all compile. 
Now what I want to do is I want to highlight TB EQ2 because I want to run the test bench on EQ2. So I want to simulate that model. Up. So I've got a problem in EQ2 test bench. Well, let's see. Where is that guy? That's line 54. Where's line 54? Right there. Oh, actually, yeah, I'm not assigning enough. Okay, I got the wrong thing. So let's see. 0010, I want 0011. Okay. How did that make that pass that? So you got to select that, check the syntax, and then let's simulate and see what happens. Okay, and let's zoom to full view and then maximize this and look what we did. Zoom to full view and there you go. Every 100 nanoseconds we're changing it. We put uh, 0, 0 on the input. If it's equal, we get a 1. Now I've got 0 on the input, 0, 1 on the other one. It's false. I got 0 here. I got 0, um, 1, 0 there. It's false. I got 0 and 3. It's false. Here I got 1 and 0. It's false. 1 and 1. It's true. 1 and 2. It's 0. 1 and 3. It's false. 2 and 0. It's not equal. Uh, 2 and 1. It's not equal. And let's see. Oh, it's like I'm missing something here. Zoom to full view. All right. Oh, you have to scroll out here. Yeah. So you'll notice here I've kind of got I've lost the last couple. I should have two zero two one two 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 three. But what's happening? I'm at one thousand nanoseconds, and my window up here was set to one microsecond. So what we could do here, we don't really need a full hundred uh, nanoseconds. What we could do is pretty much change this guy to maybe I don't know. Let's check it down to fifty. 50 nanoseconds. Yeah, we'll just do each of these 50 and that'll fit nicely within the uh, one microsecond uh, or f yeah, time frame if I do 50 nanosecond delay on this entire guy. And let's keep going. Get that to 50. 50, 50, 50, and there you go. We'll save that. Test bench, I'm going to check the syntax since I did some typing, make sure it's okay. Simulate the behavior model. And I think we should be good at this point, yeah. Let's do zoom to full view, and there we go. 0, 0, they're equal. 0, 1, not equal. 0, 2, not equal. 0, 3, not equal. 1, 0, not equal. 1, 1, equal. 1, 2, not equal. 1, 3, not equal. 2, 0, not equal. 2, 1, not equal. 2, 2, equal. 2, 3, not equal. 3, 0, not equal. 3, 1, not equal. 3, 2, not equal. 3, 3, equal. And we're out to 800 nanoseconds. All right, there you go. So, kind of summarize what here, what we did. We created an EQ1. We did a test bench. We created an EQ2 that's made up of two EQ1s. We did a test bench on that and simulated it. All right? Okay. That's enough for part two. Stay tuned for part three.